It's sister days to the presidential and parliamentary elections. Hello and welcome to Join News Prime. We're live on DSTV Channel 421, GoTV Channel 125. I'm Carlos Caloni. Now headlines, this are government in a desperate attempt to prevent Labour's nationwide strike as it ministers for national security, land and natural resources, interior, defence and environment are currently locked up in a meeting finalising plans to combat the Galamse menace. We are just on the verge of deploying this river gun. A meeting is scheduled at the Ministry of Defence today at 12 o'clock to cross the teeth and dot the eyes. The deployment of this river gun will really go a great length at um, helping us monitor the river bodies 24 7. Meanwhile, organized labor's impending strike hit a snag as Ghana Medical Association opts out, explaining they were not consulted earlier. And Bar police fight of Galamse, refusing to act on illegal mining close to its vicinity in Inyinim, as alleged by the CEO of the Minerals Commission. Details are the police uh, says several operations on the Birim River, which is 800 meters away from the police station, led to arrest and prosecution of four persons. And the Electoral Commission takes on National Democratic Congress, insisting the Commission will make the provisional voters' register available to parties in two weeks, not in a week, as speculated by the NDC. Now, government in a desperate attempt to avert a nationwide strike, as declared by organized labor as it summons ministers, involved in the fight against illegal mining to finalize plans to combat the Galamse manners. The Ministers for National Security, Land and Natural Resources, Interior, Defense and Environment have been locked up in an emergency meeting to desperately find a way to avoid a nationwide shutdown on Thursday, October 10, by organized labor. The group reaffirmed their decision to protest against the wanton destruction of the environment and river bodies by illegal mining following the government failure to meet their demands. Listen to the Secretary General of the Trades Union Congress, Joshua Ansa, announcing the decision at a news conference. The government meeting with organized labor's response. We have concluded as follows. Our strike remains unchanged. I want to repeat, the strike notice remains unchanged. We have the view that what the government has proposed to do does not adequately address our demands and therefore and therefore our notice of strike notice remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the government is making frantic efforts to avoid this full-scale strike by Labour. In fact, we understand they are currently still locked up in that meeting to devise the best strategy to deal with Galamse. Here is Minister for Land and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujina, for speaking to my colleague, Elton Brobby Elliot. I felt that uh, in the circumstances, uh, uh, this, this, this move was one which will not be detrimental to our efforts at regulating small schemes. So essentially, that's what it is. The decision has been taken to revoke LI 2462. Uh, this uh, the fight against illegal mining has been ongoing under this government for the past seven years. <clears throat> Excuse me, I would say that no government has fought this menace as much as Akufuado's government has done. <clears throat> Indeed, we all know that illegal small scale mining has been with us for many years. And when the president gave his inaugural address on 7 January 2017, a greater part of his speech focused on the issue of illegal small scale mining. That definitely presupposes that illegal small scale mining was a major problem 
at the time he took the oath of office on 7 January 2017. For about six months or so ago, we took the decision that we need to roll out a policy of river gas. In other words, we need to have a dedicated uh, um, cohort of people, a dedicated um, um, uh, personnel, group of people, personnel, who will patrol and, and, and monitor our river bodies 24-7. And so we began a collaboration with the Ghana Navy where we procured five speedboats and began a very rigorous recruitment process or exercise uh, which resulted in the recruitment of some 300 young men and women. They were trained extensively in how to pilot um, these uh, boats, in how to uh, have body cams, and how to use drones, and so many other components of this policy have now been put together. And we are just on the verge of deploying these river guards. As I speak to you, a meeting is scheduled at the Ministry of Defense today at 12 o'clock to cross the T's and dot the I's in respect of this issue of river guards. And we think that the deployment of these river guards will really go a great length at um, helping us monitor the river bodies 24-7, as it were. And this has been work in progress. This is not something that has just come up. This is something that we sought approval from the uh, central government some um, six or uh, eight months ago. I don't have the exact date with me now. But we've been working very hard at this and ensuring that we screen uh, all the recruits, all the personnel who apply to join this River Guard uh, effort. And the but organized labor is unmoved until the sea action on the ground. Professor Ramford Jampo is the University of Ghana chairman of UTAG. If you look at all that have been said, there are no, you don't even have timelines to them. And so I am surprised that Fatima says she is surprised at the response of labor. The agreement was that go listen and revert to us. They want to listen. They came back to us and we said, no way. If government is serious, a simple mo temporary moratorium on mining, so we all sit to dialogue, will be the way to go. But you are talking about things when parliament co reconvenes. Um, when is that? And um, we are going to collaborate um, with Labour to fight Galante. How? Um, we are going to ask um, that special court be set and meanwhile, people are dying. People are dying today. So why wouldn't well, you... The special court was one of your own demands. ...so that we look at the other long-term interventions. Why don't we stop the death now? Then we can talk about other long-winding propagandistic interventions later, too. And I'm surprised, like I said, that they are so saying they are surprised at labor. Hmm. The kind of leadership of labor union today, they are not zombies. Meanwhile, organized labor's planned demonstration against illegal mining has hit a setback. As medical doctors have opted out of the industrial action, Ghana Medical Association President Dr. Frank Srebro revealed that over half of their council members voted against joining the protest during the medical uh, superintendent 22nd annual general and scientific conference in the central region. Let me take this opportunity to inform all of you that Ghana Medical Association doesn't support Galamse. We think that there are pragmatic ways of dealing with it. There is no way I can plunge this association into a strike with no end in sight. Because the strike that organized labor is declaring is indefinite. Again, three weeks from today, we have our annual general conference. You are in a conference as medical superintendents today. If I declare a strike, and even though council has said no, I am sure all of you have to run back to your various facilities to go and quench the fire that will be erupting there. I would like to take this opportunity to inform all of you, I know the press is here, that Ghana Medical Association is not joining the strike. We will not embark on a strike action, but we do, in solidarity, actually share some of the sentiments that organized labor have expressed. We will find our own way of dealing with the issue and not go along with the tide of putting this country in jeopardy two months to an elections. 
Now, Ghana Police Service is fighting off claims about refusing to act on illegal mining close to its vicinity in Enyinim in the eastern region. The CEO of the Minerals Commission, Martin AEC, revealed yesterday during his submission before Parliament Assurance Committee that there's currently active illegal mining going on right behind the police station in Enyinim. He added that the commission has alerted the police to the Galamsey operation several times, but the police has failed to take action. Listen. Licenses are not issued to anybody to mine a water body. So in the first place, anybody who goes to the water body to go and mine is engaged in a criminal activity. We need to, we need to, we need to be clear about that. He's engaged in a criminal activity. If we have to give any special permit for anybody to do anything in a water body, it's what we do for VRA. That from time to time they come for this special permit to dredge the estuary to allow these water snakes that, that host the Biazia parasite to go away. We do that and that's a proper thing. Outside that, there's no way we we'll tell you, we'll give you a license to go and mine a mineral in a water body. We don't do that. So anybody who gets into the water body is, is involved in illegality. We have reported severally that behind a Nyan police station, people are doing stuff there which we have not permitted. So how, how come that the police uh, is not taking action? To us? So those guys that Minas Commission has brought to the attention of MUSEC or DISEC, depending on where it is. The Enyinam one, for example, that Galamse is taking place behind the police station. So it's like we've told you Galamse is having a job, it's under proper, that is behind this new block. Respectfully, Honorable Okujeto and Chair of this respectful Honorable Committee, the Minas Commission officer has done his work. I am not saying that we have also not let Ghana down or we are 100% right. Because they have told you that there are instances where people have had all their rights and they have made mistakes. Of course, that's why they are inspectors. But tonight, the police say the CEO of the Minerals Commission has never reported any illegal activities uh, to the police, nor has any other report of illegal mining be made. However, uh, in March 2024, the Union Police uh, uh, Command in collaboration with the District Security Council, conducted a series of operations targeting illegal activities on the Birim River, located approximately 800 meters from the Indian Police Station. These efforts resulted in the arrest of five suspects, four of whom are currently facing trial at the Kufredia Circuit Court, with the case being prosecuted by the Attorney General's Department in Kufredia. My colleague, MFA Apao, is in studio with me for pictorial evidence of the area in question. So where, where, where is that situation happening? Okay, so you can see um, the entire globe right here mm. on the screens. And I would like to take you straight, we're zooming straight um, to Enyinim in the eastern region as it expands. I'm taking you um, to, straight to the Enyinim police station. This is where it is located. Okay. And as you see, this is a 2D, but let me give you a 3D to give you a better view of everything that you see. We've right. done some calculations also that I'll take you through. Now what you're seeing, or this particular um, evidence that we have, or what you're seeing now, is as at 2023, where we're told that this was happening. So it gives you an aerial view of the entire Enyinim area. And you can see the police station and some other areas in this um, Enyinim township. And what you see, uh, which looks like um, some muddy waters, right. muddy patches. Right. This is where the action is happening. Okay. And this is where the Indian police station is located. And you've been talking about the information that the police gives you that is about 800 meters, meters approximately. Yeah. But that's, these raises questions about the fact that it means that the Indian police station is particularly aware of what is happening within its vicinity. But must there be a complaint before they oh, take yeah. action is the concern. But at least they say that some five persons were arrested way back in March. What about today as we speak? But this is the forest okay. or the Enyinem uh, where this particular Galamse activity is taking place. Yeah. You can see the muddy waters mm -hmm. and what is snaking through tells you that these are where the action is okay. happening. And this is the Enyinem police station. Okay as to where exactly this right, and I believe this is, is the main road that leads And this Kumasi. is the main road, exactly, okay. that, that takes you to Kumasi. Yeah. So if you look at all these patches, this is where the action is taking place. Okay. So what exactly is the action that has been taken by the police service when it comes to this situation? So this is the Enyinem police station, and this is where all the action is happening. And, and from our calculation, between 500 meters mm -hmm. 
to 800, 700 meters. That's the calculation okay. that we've been able to take, at least with the help of technology. That's where we are. But it tells you about the devastating impact okay. of the illegal mining and look at the waters. All right. Or uh, is it the cocoa tea that we talk mm -hmm. about yeah. or the milo tea? I yeah. don't know which one it is, but this is the situation. Right in the middle of a town, we have the Union yeah. Police Station situated. Which is right less there. than one kilometer radius exactly. close to the police station. Less there. than one kilometer radius, like you put it. Your yeah. calculation is much, much better. Yeah. But this is the, the, what the technology is telling us. Google Earth, that's the source, and it's telling us about the approximately how far away the Union Police Station is from where the illegal mining activity is happening, happening. right in the center. Okay. What's been done? Is, it remains a key question. All right. Thank you so much, MFA, for those details there. Now, moving on, the Ghana Private Road Transport Union is asking the government to heed to calls of organized labor for the immediate ban of illegal mining in the country. GPRT also wants the government to revoke the legislative instrument, uh, 2462, that grants small-scale mining firms permission to mine in forest reserves. Organized labor is seeking an end to Galamse with a strike a scheduled for this week to press home demands for the government to halt all forms of illegal mining. Public relations officer of GPRTU, Al Haji Abbas Ibrahim Moro, says his outfit is in full support of the industrial action and will escalate it further if the government fails to act. Uh, a member of the organized labor, as such, whatever decision. Organized labor takes, we are bound to be part of it, or we are fully part of it. We've seen this Galamse issue has been in existence for decades. It was initially practiced the way it is today. Today, all our water bodies are being uh, poisoned with the chemicals those Galamse used to extract the minerals that they are looking for. Uh, all the forest reserves, which is of course, you know, the forest, the trees, etc., etc., will also prolong our livelihood. And all are also being destroyed. We are fighting to protect human lives. That is all that organized labor is trying to protect. We are not into politics. We are not supporting one group against the other. So they shouldn't dare. They, at least they should do whatever possible to make sure they, they salvage all of us from the situation in which we are. Still on Galamse, the leadership of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is worried over the increasing negative uh, effects of illegal mining, which they say is affecting soul-winning efforts of the church. Uh, according to the Executive Secretary of the Northern Ghana Union of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, Pastor Edward Nyako, he says the church can no longer baptize new converts in areas affected by illegal mining because of increasing turbidity levels in water bodies across the country. It has joined you, churches are now forced to construct baptistries for new converts because the church can no longer conduct baptismal services in rivers. Ohimi Tewia has more in the following report. The Northern Ghana Union of the Seventh-day Adventist Church has 2,000 251 congregations in the northern sector of Ghana, with a total membership of 218,000 as of the end of July 2024. For years, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which believed in the biblical baptism of immersion, has been conducting baptisms of new convicts in rivers and streams. But the church is being compelled to construct baptistries in place of conducting baptisms in streams and rivers. That is according to the Executive Secretary of the Northern Ghana Union of the Church, Pastor Edward Nyako. Galamse has come to destroy all the water bodies. Uh, so it's also affecting our baptism. Because uh, previously we were baptizing in rivers. But nowadays the, the, all the water bodies are contaminated. Therefore that has resulted for this church to build this uh, baptistry so that uh, all those who will be baptized and the uh, pastors who will be officiating will not be contaminated. Pastor Nyako spoke at the sidelines of the 40th anniversary climax of the Boshan Kropa branch of the Seven-Day Adventist Church. 
Now, convener of the Fix the Country movement and leader of a recent protest to demand governmental action against illegal mining has been denied bail three times in a row. Oliver Baka Vomao has been denied bail twice by the circuit court and once by the high court and will continue to be in detention. Meanwhile, 52 other persons who the police have charged for various offences in relation to the protest have now been admitted bail after spending two weeks in custody. Member of our legal affairs desk, Kweko Asante, has been shuttling or uh, engaging with some of them and now report. It's been more than two weeks in either police or prison cells for some 53 protesters who were arrested in relation to the Stop Galamsey protest. 52 of them now finally having been granted bail by either the Circuit Court or the Accra High Court. And they are now undergoing the process to ensure that they meet the bail conditions and go home to be with their families. Oliver Bakavomawa, the leader of the Fix the Country movement and organizer of that protest, however, will continue to be behind bars because both the High Court and the Circuit Court on three different occasions have refused to grant him bail. They have cited some legal issues that does not allow them to grant him bail, in particular having to do with Section 96.5C of Act 30, that talks about an accused person in another trial who has been granted bail and their apprehension by the court that that person might go and commit another offense if he's granted bail. Those are legal issues that the prosecution have been raising in court that the court have largely been agreeing with. But the lawyers for the protesters say they are going to ensure that those legal issues are dealt with and they expect that very soon Oliver Bakavomawa will be granted bail. The court also took aim at the prosecution for not filing some documents. We have been talking to lawyers for the protesters who say they are even going to demand more from the prosecution. It's been a successful day so far and all we can say is thanks to God Almighty for the victory we have talked today. And I'm sure at the end of the day, the court will pronounce all the accused persons as innocent persons. With the back of our world's bill, again, application denied. What is going to be the next decisions going forward when it comes to him? Uh, that one raises legal concerns. So we have to address the court on that legal concerns, the same legal concerns that were raised at the high court. So and, and in the coming days, we will address the court on those legal concerns, why the court should overlook those legal concerns and grant him bill. There's an issue of the prosecution not filing some documents, some processes. The court... It's not asking them to do so by the next agenda. It's, what do you make of that? Yes, that one is in order. And we have a lot of documents that we'll be asking that, uh, the prosecution to provide. If, because so far, the documents they are provided are not what we are looking for. We are looking for more documents from them. So at the next agenda, we'll put that on the table and get them to provide us with those further and better particulars. State prosecutors opposed many of the bail applications. The others that they asked the court to deal with, with its discretion. The state prosecutors have now been asked by the court to ensure that all the necessary documents are filed for the trial to start. In fact, the High Court ordered the trial court to actually commence Oliver Bakavamo's trial within 72 hours or consider granting him bail. These were some of the issues that were raised in court by the lawyers and the judge said the 72 hours has not yet been reached, and when it gets there, the court may consider granting Oliver back of our bail. But as of now, the good news for the families of the 52 persons who have now been granted bail is that their family, their kids and kin, will now come to them in the house and spend the weekend with them at least, as they have now been granted bail, with the exception of Oliver back of Vomao, who will continuously be in custody until a court of competent jurisdiction grants him bail. Reporting from the circuit court here in Accra, my name is Kweku Asante for Joy News. All Hill Pando Senior High School riding high on the wings of victory. Winners of the fifth edition of the Energy Commission's Senior High School Renewable Energy Challenge. The final event under the theme, Application of Renewable Energy Technologies in Solving Land Degradation and Water Pollution. So the Pokpa Technical Institute, Hantama Girls Senior High School, Ola Girls Senior High School, Obwasi Senior High Technical School, and St. James Seminary Senior High School also fight for the top prize. Jacqueline and Soma Yibwa has more in the following report. <laughs> 
The grand finale held at the Accra International Conference Center was held under the theme application of renewable energy technologies in solving land degradation and water pollution. And Bando SHS, well, they just didn't compete. They anticipated their win, electrifying the judges and audience alike. The other niggas were making noise. We didn't make noise. What did you do? Were they natural? natural. Calm and collected. Ah. Eh? Mindful and demure. Mindful. We maintained our steeds. And what yes. did you do? We delivered. The competition saw stiff rivalry from the Bokba Technical Institute, a Hunterman Girls Senior High, or La Girls Senior High, or Boise Senior High Technical School, and St. James Seminary Senior High. But in the end, Bando's winning project focused on harnessing plastic waste as a valuable resource, turning what's often seen as trash into gold. Their innovative approach not only impressed the judges, but also offered a sustainable solution to plastic pollution. In the end, they switched on a winning performance, leaving the others in their shade. Yes! We what? Deliver! Hey, GGI what? Go get it! We have no time to waste. What do you do? Dead! 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 Why are you staying? Why are you staying? So mesmerizing. I knew it. Because if you had listened to our anthem from the onset, we said, Oh, blessed Pasek, not invade thy tour. Therefore, there is no way Pasek and Stoil is going to be invaded. The Bokba Technical Institute, the first runner ups were still beaming with joy despite not taking home the trophy. I told you the, the early hours that we're going to win, but we couldn't make it. So, second is the same as first, so we made it again. So, maybe next year. We we'll try our best. Officer in charge of renewable energy regulation at the Energy Commission, Bernice Norte, praised the winning schools project and revealed that all projects from participating schools would be further developed. Pando's project really stood out to me throughout the regional competition because um, they were turning plastics into something usable. We are looking at not just refining the winning project, but we are also looking at um, giving all the projects to CSIR to see which ones will be commercially viable that they can also bring to the market for commercialization. So while the light at the ACC may be off, the bright ideas from these young minds will continue to shine on. For Joy News, I am Jacqueline and Sama Yeboa. I school is the second. The second is still as the, the first. So we don't feel depressed. We feel impressed. So this is to join us prime with me, Carlos Galoni. We'll take a short break, we'll return with more. Please stay. Welcome back. Election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol, Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountant and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, German Ozone Medical Center, Alternative Therapy, Dental Wellness and Beauty, also Chobox Technologies, a convenient service and youth bridge foundation, bridging the gap for positive youth development. This evening, the Electoral Commission has taken on the National Democratic Congress but what it says are misleading comments on when the provisional register will be made available to the political parties. The NDC has, in the past few weeks, raised allegations of illegal voter transfer and other discrepancies in the voters register, calling for an audit. The Electoral Commission last week held a live telecast IPAC meeting, exhibiting measures taken to address the issues. Listen to the EC Chairperson Jean Menson announcement on when the corrected provisional voters register will be made available to the parties. We would have the media cover all our processes from a media IPAC meetings from, from now on. We should within the next two weeks or so or earlier present you with the revised you know, provisional voters register as indicated to allow you to review it and to inform us of any discrepancies that you may have. In addition to that, as that goes out, we would also you know, post you know, the register online to enable citizens have the opportunity to inform us of their discrepancies and to allow us to correct them.
Now, the Electoral Commission in a release or latest release is raising some concerns about the NDC's fresh position on this matter. And my colleague James Averji joins me Vazo with details of that. James, what is the concern of the Commission regarding this particular matter? Well, tell us, the Electoral Commission said they took taking notice of some other communication from the NDC, mm. which is indicating that the EC chair promised to make available that provisional voter register in one way, just for purposes of clarification. Let me quote what they said in that press release. They said, quote, the functional executive committee of the NDC has delivered, uh, uh, has uh, deliberated and decided to accept the EC's promise Mm. to release the provision uh, to the political parties the corrected or updated version of the 2024 provisional voters register for a scrutiny within one week and so that's what the uh, electoral commission is taking exception to that right. the issue wasn't specific for one week and so uh, uh, urging the public to disregard that we have done a full check we saw a post on the facebook page of the director of the elections of Anifuama. But he ended that post ended without the within one week. It is unclear whether the post has been edited after the electoral commission has given out uh, this uh, uh, notice. But what the EC is saying that that should be disregarded. The position of the EC is that within two weeks or less. We are grateful to you, James Averji, is my colleague in the joint newsroom. Now, the national chairman of the National Democratic Congress, the NDC, Johnson Asiedu Nketiah, has advised electorate in the Guang constituency to vote against the new patriotic party, the NPP, for denying them a representative in parliament for four years. Parties taking them for granted in the future and allocate the area what is duly uh, for them. Mr. Nketiah said this during his campaign tour of the Guang constituency in the OT region. The national chairman of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asiedu Nketia, led a team to canvass for votes in the newly created Guan constituency. The area, carved out of the Hoho constituency in the Volta region and added to the Oti region, which was created in 2018, had no representative in parliament over the last four years. Mr. Nketia feels this act is enough justification for electorates in the Guan constituency to vote against the governing New Patriotic Party on December 7th. So let us fight and run, at least to demonstrate that you cannot treat a group of people in the country, take their vote away with just a letter written by one person. And that for four years, that group cannot be in parliament. Even with this one, the struggle to make sure that this constituency elects an MP. It hasn't even ended. It is still ongoing. People are still contemplating whether they should allow you to have your own MP. And they are citing technicalities and things in the courts and other places. To demonstrate that you have serious revulsion about the treatment that has been made. The Guan NDC parliamentary candidate, Fred Agbanyo, reminded electorate of its vision for the area and appealed for peaceful elections. Stakeholders are pushing for collaboration between the media and security agencies ahead of the 2024 elections. The move, according to Commandant of the Kofi Annan International Peace Training Center, uh, Major General Richard Adonjani, will help ensure the safety of journalists during the election period. He spoke at the multi-stakeholder dialogue on security and media at the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center here in Accra. In, in Rwanda, one journalist got up and called one group cockroaches. 
and not trigger the, the, the genocide. Of course, there, there, there might have been underlying issues, but that triggered it. So the power of the media is so important, and especially in, in elections, which is going to uh, be fought very, uh, uh, going to contest strong, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be the two parties, the two main parties are very strong and, and on the ground. So we encourage the media to, to be circumspect, especially in their reportage. Uh, with the security agencies, they also have a role. I mean, uh, uh, we, we expect them to be, be fair and in the way they deal with uh, the, 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 the various parties and also with, it, with, with the citizenry. That's what we're looking for. And we think also that the, the media should collaborate with the security engine. We have an election security task force. I expect the Ghana General Administration to sit with them. And somebody was asking about the security of the media person and all that. I think that when they collaborate and sit down and, and, and put and plan, they will know how better to, to handle this situation. The, the, the media people will feel very safe on the ground. And we, all that we are looking for, we are looking for a very peaceful election and a very transparent one. The Danish ambassador to Ghana, Tom Noring, has also been weighing into the conversation about press freedom. He is asking the media to make deliberate efforts in building trust with the citizens to ensure their safety and freedom. He spoke on PM Express last night. And having a strong and independent media is part of that trust building. Okay. The fact that if things go wrong, there's somebody there, you can call it the watchdogs of society, mm -hmm. to keep our institutions, keep our politicians, keep our businesses, keep our CSOs, whatever it is, keep them uh, accountable for uh, whatever they say and whatever they do. And I think that that has been very, very important for many years in Denmark. We, we are also amongst those who have consistently put pressure uh, on ourselves to live up to human rights, all human rights, all that you find in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, mm. and to make sure that this is something we all back up, both Denmark, our neighbors, our friends across the globe. Mm. And personally, I see press freedom, a strong press, as one of the most important human rights we have. Because in an essence, uh, press freedom is the one that guarantees that all the other human rights are actually being mm. acknowledged mm. and respected. Okay. There's more after this break. Please stay. Welcome back. Now let's take you to the streets of Accra, where hundreds, including the clergy and civil society organizations, have taken to the street to pile pressure on the Chief Justice and the Attorney General to fast-track hearing of a case which has slowed the process of getting the newly passed anti-LGBTQ bill into law. The bill was passed by Parliament in February this year, but has not been signed into law by President Akufuado, following a legal challenge seeking to prevent the President from signing it into law. My colleague Kenneth Jesse observed the march and now report. Well, thousands of Ghanaians thronged the streets of Accra to march in protest to the delay in the hearing of the anti-LGBTQ bill. Well, the march, which was led by co-sponsor of the bill, Sam George, saw many people voice out their displeasure, including some George himself and members of the public. We are simply here to ask the Chief Justice to stop being selective in the dispensation of justice. We are demanding that the Chief Justice stops abusing her office and her power. She's using her power capriciously and maliciously, and that has been warned and prevented in Article 296 of the Constitution. What is keeping her? 
What is keeping the chief justice? That is our concern. So the chief justice should give us a ruling. The chief justice should proceed with the case. That is what we are asking. That's what we are asking. For the attorney general, we are asking the attorney general to do his work. His work which we, as taxpayers, pay him. This is a divine call, a clarion call for us as a people to observe what we were born into. My brother, you are a man. I believe you have a wife. Definitely you are going to have children. And that is what the Bible tells us as Christians, that a man should marry a woman. There's nowhere in our religious beliefs where a man is supposed to marry a man. Or well, some George, petitioned the Attorney General and the Supreme Court to collaborate and ensure expedited hearing of the case. In your statement, the Supreme Court made reference to having, and I quote, an early trial, assuring us that it will work expeditiously to hear and rule on these matters in a timely manner. Unfortunately, over 10 weeks later, there is no indication of any shadow or actions to execute an early trial that will protect our rights as citizens to timely and efficient justice delivery in this instance. Without speedy scheduling of the hearings, further time will be lost, potentially preventing the conclusion of the bill this year and further risking three years of time and resource investments in this draft bill and precipitating the need for more time and investments if this bill is to see the light of day. From the Supreme Court of Ghana, Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. Well, that's all we have time for. You can log on to myjoyonline.com for more stories. My name is Carlos Scaloni. Thank you so much for watching.